Chapter 3 Escape The barn was very large. It was very old. It smelled of hay and it smelled of manure. It smelled of the perspiration of tired horses and the wonderful sweet breath of patient cows. It often had a sort of peaceful smell, as though nothing bad could happen ever again in the world. It smelled of grain and of harnish dressing and of axle grease and of rubber boots and of new rope. And whenever the cat was given a fish hat to it, the barn would smell of fish, but mostly it smelled of hay, for there was always hay in the great loft up overhead, and there was always hay being pitched down to the cows and the horses and the sheep. The barn was pleasantly warm in winter when the animals spent most of their time indoors, and it was pleasantly cool in summer when the big doors stood wide open to the breeze. The barn had stalls on the main floor for the workhorses, tie-ups on the main floor for the cows, and a sheepfold down below for the sheep, and a pig pen down below for Wilbur, and it was full of all sorts of things that you find in barns. Ladders, grindstones, pitch force, monkey ranches, scythes, lawn mowers, snow shovels, axe handles, milk pails, water buckets, empty grain sacks, and rusty rat traps. It was the kind of barn the swallows liked to build their nest in. It was the kind of barn that children liked to play in. And the whole thing was owned by Fern's uncle, Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman. Wilbur's new home was in the lower part of the barn, directly underneath the cows. Mr. Zuckerman knew that the manure pile is a good place to keep a young pig. Pigs need warmth, and it was warm and comfortable, down there in the barn cellar on the south side. Fern came almost every day to visit him. She found an old milking stool that had been discarded, and she placed the stool in the sheepfold next to Wilbur's pen. Here she sat quietly during the long afternoon, thinking and listening and watching Wilbur. The sheep soon got to know her and trust her. So did the geese who lived with the sheep. All the animals trusted her. She was so quiet and friendly. Mr. Zuckerman did not allow her to take Wilbur out, and he did not allow her to get into the pig pen. But he told the fern that she could sit on the stool and watch Wilbur as long as she wanted to. It made her happy just to be near the pig, and it made the wolver happy to know that she was sitting there right outside his pen, but he never had any fun. No walks, no rides, no swims. One afternoon in June, when wolver was almost two months old, he wandered out into his small yard outside the barn. Fern had not arrived for her usual visit. Wilbur stood in the sun feeling lonely and bored. There's nothing, anything. There's never anything to do around here, he thought. He walked slowly to his food trough and sniffed to see if anything had been overlooked at lunch. He found a small strip of potato skin and ate it. His back itched, so he leaned against the fence and rubbed against the board. When he tired of this, he walked indoors, climbed to the top of the manure pile, and sat down. He didn't feel like going to sleep. He didn't feel like digging. He was tired of standing still, tired of lying down. I'm less than two months old, and I'm tired of living, he said. He walked out to the yard again. When I'm out, here, he said, there's no place to go but in. When I'm indoors, there's no place to go but out in the yard. 
There is where you are wrong, my friend, my friend, said the voice. Wolva looked through the fence, saw the goose standing there. You don't have to stay in that dirty little, dirty little, dirty little yard, said the goose, who talked rather fast. One of the boards is loose. Push on it. Push, push, push on it. And come on out. What? said Wolva. Say it slower. At, at, at the risk of repeating myself, said the goose, I suggest that you come on, come on out. It's wonderful out here. Did you say your board was loose? That I did, that I did, said the goose. Wolver walked up to the fence and saw that the goose was right. One board was loose. He put his head down, shut his eyes, and pushed. The board gave way. In a minute, he had squeezed it through the fence and was standing in the long grass outside his yard. The goose chuckled. How does he feel to be free? she asked. I like it, said Wolver. That is, I guess I like it. Actually, Wolver felt queer to be outside his fence with nothing between him and the big world. Where do you think I'd better go? Anywhere you like, anywhere you like, said the goose. Go down through the orchard, loot up the sod, go down through the garden, dig up the radishes, loot up everything, eat grass, look for corn, look for oats, run or over, skip and dance, jump and prance, go down through the orchard and stroll the woods. The world is a wonderful place when you are young. I can see that, replied the wolver. He gave a jump in, in the air, twirled, ran a few steps, stopped, looked all around, sniffed the smells of afternoon, and then set off walking down through the orchard. Pausing in the shade of an apple tree, he put his strong snout into the ground and began pushing, digging, and rooting. He felt very happy. He had plowed a quiet piece of ground before anyone noticed him. Mrs. Jockerman was the first to see him. She saw him from the kitchen window, and she immediately shouted for the man. Homer, she cried. Peace out, Lurvy, peace out. Homer, Lurvy, peace out. He's down there under the apple tree. Now the trouble starts, thought Wilbur. Now I will catch it. The goose heard the racket and she too started to hollering. Run, run, run downhill. Make for the woods, the woods, she shouted to Wilbur. They'll never, never, never catch you in the woods. The cocker spaniel heard the commotion and he ran out from the barn to join the chase. Mr. Jockerman heard and he came out of the machine shed where he was mending a tool, Lurvy, the hired man, heard the noise and came up from the asparagus patch where he was pulling weeds. Everybody walked toward Wilbur, and Wilbur didn't know what to do.